Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, with today's video I'm going to finish the series on the Petrov defense and after that we are off to the scotch. Uh, and today I'm going to cover two sidelines for white with which white can avoid uh, taking the pawn on uh, on e5, which is the main line and which is by, by far the most common move. Uh, before I start, I just want to say, uh, in response to a comment I've seen uh, on the last couple of videos, uh, where is the middle game series, uh, as I've said a few videos ago, I want to finish e4 openings. I only have the Scotch, Philidor and the Nimcovic to go. And after I have finished uh, the e4 series, then at the start of June, I'm going to start uh, d4 with the King's Indian, and I'm going to start the endgame series. So for now, I'm done with the middle games, as I said uh, in that video. If you have any suggestions for a middle game team, uh, then please do post it in the comments below or email me, and I will consider making a video on that. And, and I'm going to keep update, updating the middle game series uh, forever, probably, because it's inexhaustible, really. But uh, for now, I want to finish E4 and start the D4 series and the endgames. So, sorry for the digression. Uh, okay, let's get into the openings. We are going to look at two variations, uh, the modern attack and the three knights. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, we are going to be looking at the move d4, which is the modern attack, and the move knight to c3. And both of these moves avoid the main lines with knight takes e5, which is, as I said, uh, well, let's just see in the database, knight takes e5, 14,000 games, d4, 4,000 games, knight c3, 2,500 games. So taking the pawn is very popular. And if you don't take the pawn, your opponent is probably going to be surprised because most people expect you to take the pawn. So let's get into the first sideline. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it, both of these are fine for white not really a big advantage is not as if you have a winning surprise weapon which is going to win the game because of one reason uh it's not easy for black to go wrong and uh, there aren't that comp complicated uh, there are no uh there's no room for big blunders at start of the opening and most players who play the petrov are going to feel feel comfortable playing these positions but still, they, they might be nice uh, surprises for your opponent. So after d4, uh, there are two moves here. Uh, knight takes e4 is the best move. Uh, another move is e takes d4. Uh, we, we are going to look at that first, but that move, in my opinion, isn't that good. Because after e takes d4, uh, white temporarily sacrifices the pawn to play the move e5. And after e5, the knight has to move. Uh, the only good square really is e4. Uh, if the knight goes to d5, then queen takes uh, d4 with the tempo on the knight, and white would be virtually winning. So knight e4, because after queen takes d4, black can now play d5, defending the knight. And now you have this knight on e4, which is common in the Petrov, but as opposed to the other variations, you can capture uh, Ampasan on d6, and after e takes d6, knight takes d6, the knight no longer has an outpost on e4. And after knight to c3, uh, well, knight c6, black gains the tempo on the queen, queen to f4. I think white is slightly better. The pawn structure is symmetrical though, so uh, not too many winning chances in an endgame. But on the other hand, you have a completely open center uh, with all four bishops still on the board. So this, in my opinion, is a very interesting variation. It could go wrong for both sides very quickly if they aren't careful. And there are huge attacking chances for both sides because both kings are still in the center. Both kings are still two moves away from castling and both sides have their bishops. So this variation is slightly better for white because of the development uh, and the active queen and the slightly misplaced knight on d6 for black, which, uh, well, it look, looks awkward blocking the bishop. Uh, so I would have white here. And that's why after d4, e takes d4 is an error. And I wouldn't recommend you play that. But as I said, since you are using the modern attack as a surprise weapon, you are uh, going to see this on the board, I'm sure. So, okay. The main move knight takes e4. After knight takes e4, white can recapture on e5 immediately or chase the knight away with bishop to d3 or try to chase the knight away. Uh, bishop d3 is a much better move. Uh, bishop d3. And now once again d5. Uh, now, of course, there is no one passant because you don't have a pawn on e5, but you can take knight takes e5. And now, uh, the same way, uh, black has an outpost on e4, white has an outpost on e5. And uh, you could argue that white's move is uh, 
more useful because white uh, has an extra move. So if bishop d6, then castles, then castles. So obviously white has an extra move in this position and uh, any attacking chances are going to be on white's side. Still, you have the common pattern of uh, symmetry here in the position with the pawns on d4 and d5, and obviously not much going on in the position. So after knight d7, knight takes d7 is the best move. Bishop takes d7, white castles, bishop d6, c4. This is the one advantage white has. He gets to play c4 sooner, and c6 should be the best move. Uh, c takes d5, c takes d5. Knight, a, knight to c3, and the best move for black is obviously to take, because the king is still in the center. If black allows rook to e1, then white is going to be winning. So after takes, takes, castles, the one advantage, uh, well, arguably an advantage white has, is the fact that black has an isolated pawn on d5, which could be a weakness. On the other hand, white has a weakness on c3, but it can easily be defended with bishop to d2. So this setup with both bishops pointing and the, at the king and the weakness on d5, uh, let's say queen to f3 or, or queen to b3, looking at the pawn is, in my opinion, slightly favorable for, for white. White has an obvious weakness to exploit and his own weakness isn't really that weak. So in this position, I would prefer to have white. Uh, queen h5 is the main move, provoking the move g6. And now we get, get into some complications uh, because obviously black is sacrificing a pawn. Uh, queen takes d5, queen to c7, but black has compensation. So after b takes c3, uh, to avoid all of this, black can try and uh, play something passive, such as bishop to e6 to defend the d5 pawn. But in theory, it's best to castle and allow this play uh, g6, queen takes d5, queen c7, threatening h2. And now uh, white's best move is bishop to h6, allowing this. And uh, if black takes, of course, he's losing a piece because king h1 and losing a piece or the exchange. So the rook would be hanging and the bishop would be, be hanging after g3. So let me just show you this. So now black is to move, he has to save the rook, has to save the bishop, and uh, there's no way to do both. There are no tricks, uh, white cannot get checkmated. So after bishop to h6, rook f to d8 is the move, and now uh, white can give up the pawn all the same, uh, threatening to go here because queen g5. Now once again, if black takes uh, king h1, uh, black isn't going to be in time to save the position because if here, here, uh, the queen is going to get to f6 and here, and the bishop cannot go to f8, it doesn't have enough time, I think. Uh, there's some problem with that. Or at least uh, black is in too much trouble already with the king uh, so opened up. So after queen to g5, the main move is queen takes c3, rook f to d1, saving the bishop. Taking here is bad because of bishop takes uh, here. Uh, bishop f8, bishop takes f8, rook takes f8, rook a to c1, and a sort of equal position. The engine will tell you that it's completely equal. Uh, as I said, out of the opening, I like white's chances. So let's look at it once again. Uh, so d4, instead of taking the e5 pawn, is, is interesting. As I said, e takes d4 can be uh, better for white, slightly better for white. So black shouldn't play that. Knight takes c4 should be played, and then you get this position, which is symmetrical, but... Uh, white gets to play c4 first and castle, and in this position, after knight to c3, uh, white is provoking some weaknesses, threatening the pawn, threatening rook to e1, so black has to take. And now, if black doesn't castle, he's going to be passive. If he castles, then you get in this variation with queen to h5 and winning this pawn. So I think the modern attack is preferable for, for white. Not that it's winning, but it's easy to learn it, and it's... Uh, it could be useful as a, as a sideline to know for, for white. And obviously most people who play e4 want to punish the Petrov, so uh, th this could be a nice way. Okay, uh, the next variation after knight to f6 is knight to c3. This is the three knights game. And first of all, I want to say that knight to c6 for black leads to the four knights, which is a completely different story, uh, has nothing to do with the Petrov anymore. And we are not going to look at that. Uh, let's just see one variation, d4, e, d4. So now we are enter entering the scotch variation, knight takes d4, bishop b4, knight c6, b6, bishop d3. It's tricky and it doesn't resemble uh, the Petrov at all. So this won't be included in the video. The only move for black to stay in the Petrov defense, uh, the three knights, is the move bishop to b4. Uh, after bishop to b4, uh, well, uh, this pawn is hanging, but the e4 pawn is hanging as well if uh, black wishes to take it with, re with capturing on c3. So white plays uh, knight takes e5. And this variation for black uh, isn't really that good. 
because of queen to e2 and stuff like that and uh, black could easily be in trouble so after knight takes c5 black is best advised to castle after castles white should castle as well and playing the move such as bishop to d3 uh, could be okay because then you don't give back the pawn but in theory bishop to e2 is a better move uh, here uh, bishop to e2 has been played uh, 300 times knight to d3 has been played 140 times and I'm not really sure what's so wrong with bishop to d3. Let's just check with an engine because it seems okay. Rook moves, knight moves. Yeah, it's still, it's two attackers on the pawn. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Doesn't really make, make sense. So after castles, bishop to e2, just giving up the pawn with your king defended is better. Rook to e8, knight to d3, bishop c3, dc3, knight takes c4, castles. And uh, this is the variation that you are going to get. Out of the three knights, uh, it has been played on the highest level. Uh, there are still about 150 games from this position, and the theory is quite developed. But nothing major for either side. And if I had to choose which sideline to play, I would always play the modern attack, because in this position, white doesn't really have that much. There's no attack uh, in the position. Uh, he has doubled pawns for the bishop pair, but... I would rather have black's position, to be honest. Uh, the bishop pair doesn't really seem that dangerous at the moment. So the position would continue either with d5 or d6 for black. Uh, d5 is the main move. Knight f4, c6, bishop e3, knight d6, rook to e1. Normal development and uh, an even game. So uh, this position, if, if you decide to play... Uh, knight to c3 then i think you should be prepared for knight to c6 because it is the most common move entering the four knights and the only uh, petrov variation which you should know is bishop to b4 so be prepared for both and be prepared for a complex game which doesn't resemble the petrov on the other hand uh, the move d4 the modern attack is very interesting you're basically giving black a chance to go wrong with a visually okay move on on move three and white is already slightly better here and if black plays correctly then i really don't see any problems for white this variation is perfectly fine and i would love to have white here so yeah uh considering the, the modern attack uh, i've been looking at it closely and i think i'm going to play it uh the next time i face the petrov because it seems very interesting and uh, let me know what you think about these two sidelines uh this is the end of the series on the Petrov. I hope you liked it. Hope you got to learn the opening uh, well. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed something. Sorry if I didn't go uh, in detail enough or if I went too deep into some variations. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to continue with the scotch. And I'm looking forward to the scotch game. It's quite aggressive and, uh, and interesting. Thanks very much. Thank you once again for the comments and for the support. And stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye. See you later.